Alright, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Sunday night. You just never know in this league, man, because on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, a short-handed Knicks team with no R.J. Barrett and once again no Mitchell Robinson was facing a fully rested, fully healthy Sixer team. And uh, you didn't know how this thing was going to work out because in, at, by the end of the first quarter, the Knicks found themselves down by as much as 21 points. But it was the Knicks bench, bench's heroics that would come through in this game. Evan Fournier, Miles McBride, Isaiah Hartenstein, Obi Toppin would help the Knicks jump out to a 17-0 run to get this thing back respectable. And while the Sixers took a three-point lead into the fourth, the second unit once again came through, spearheaded by Jalen Brunson and the second unit pieces. And uh, the Knicks were able to separate themselves from this Philly team and get a monster, monster win, man. 108 to 97. Knicks get a big win on the second night of a back to back. CP the franchise, Alex Taros on the ones and twos. Salutes everybody in the chat, man. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Hit that thumbs up button for a big, big win. It was surprised to see RJ as a, as a late scratch. He had IQ starting for him. Obviously, the Philly's been playing great, great basketball between Embiid, Harden, uh, you know, Tucker providing the defense. Coming off of a tough loss last night, th this was hard to uh it was hard for me to see them you know really really coming through especially the way this game started i mean at one point we were down 31 to 12 in the first quarter 31 to 12 i'm just like oh man this this, this thing they're gonna let go of the rope early mm -hmm. but give credit man um so many so many stars so many game balls to go around i thought um first of all hartenstein was big tonight because you knew Sims was going to have trouble with MB, right? Mm -hmm. uh, rightfully so. He's MVP candidate. Sims picked up two quick fouls. So Hartenstein had to come in and he had to hold it down. And I thought he did that, not just defensively, just giving his best, but five offensive rebounds for Hartenstein. And he mm -hmm. finished with 15, 14 on the night, 14 on the night. And because of that, the Knicks were able to win the second chance points battle for the first time in a long time, man, 20 to seven. Uh, so I thought Hartenstein's minutes were big. In the fourth quarter, you had Fournier. Evan Fournier, my guy Benji, is going to be going crazy. <laughs> my, my guy Benji's going to be going crazy, all right? Evan Fournier with nine points in the fourth, three big time three pointers for Fournier. He dumped, dipped him to his bag. It said, don't forget about me because we need three-point shooting. I should have been in this rotation. And how about McBride? Mm -hmm. Two big corner threes for Miles McBride. Oh, Daniel, Daniel, you got to turn turn the music off. Turn the music off. Two big corner threes for Miles McBride. Um, and his defense was commendable as well. You know, you, you had Obi chipping in with four points. I, the, the bench was just great, man. The, yep. the bench was just absolutely electric in this game. Um, plus 28 for 48, plus 34 for McBride, plus 19 for Hartenstein, plus 17 for Obi. Incredible, man. 37 points for this Knicks bench. And then in the fourth, you know, I thought Brunson did a great job facilitating, getting all these guys involved. Seven assists mm -hmm. for Jalen Brunson. Julius Randle came in in the fourth and did his thing as well to seal the deal. 24 points, nine rebounds, seven assists for Julius. This is a big team win, man. Right? But as you talked about, solid team effort, the way they just battled. And it really, second unit, another night in a row, man. They're really showing you that they can provide some quality minutes out here and keep the team in it. And especially for today where you don't have, you know you're already out Mitchell Robinson. R.J. Barrett is a late scratch. The fact that you get the production out of Evan Fournier, who's in and out of the rotation, was yeah. phenomenal. McBride is starting to figure out how to get to his spots. He's becoming more aggressive. Very right? aggressive. He's just making, Very aggressive by Deuce. And he's making, um, like, uh, what is it? He's making uh, high IQ plays, good good awareness today. His ability to just go up and catch the ball before it goes out of bounds to tip it right back to uh, Grimes so that we don't lose a possession. That's all stuff, man. And then you talk about Hardenstein battling. Is, it's it's This is a seriously good win, considering that the Knicks – as as I mentioned in yesterday's show, that 
they were close against them in in Chris, on Christmas Day, right? Yeah. And yeah. the fact that you just defeated the a, a top team that is just you know bulldozing through opponents so far with especially with the Joel Embiid and uh, James Harden pick and rolling. You saw how lethal that was today. The fact that the Knicks right. were able to come through and have solid performances, in the, especially in the fourth quarter, great stuff. Here's what, let me tell you, this is the scoring in the fourth quarter alone by, by some of these guys. Miles McBride, 14 points. Evan Fournier, 11. Hartenstein, oh, sorry, sorry, we're, we're in the plus minus. We're in the plus mm -hmm. minus. Going a little crazy over here. Seven, <laughs> points from McBride, seven, yeah. seven points from McBride, nine points for Fournier. You had five for Brunson, four for Randall, and that's where you got most of your scoring tonight to to in the fourth quarter with some good defense. Look, they kept Philly under uh, 100 points, you know, and we've been struggling without Mitchell Robinson. So, yeah. solid team win, especially on the second of a back-to-back, -back, you know. Kudos to the Knicks for being able to pull this one out. Let's hear it from the people, man. Let's go to Cody Glock. Cody Glock, kick us off. How you feeling, bro? Alex, man, he predicted the future, man. He said the Knicks was going to shock the world and beat the Sixers. I wasn't an advocate for that. I thought we was going to get spanked. We didn't get spanked. It was looking like we was about to get spanked. We didn't get spanked. RJ didn't play. I don't know what was going on. Maybe he was sipping that bum juice on the rocks. Me. Very neat, and he just caught the sickness, you know. I, I don't know what's going on with that. We got to watch that, man. Maybe he's on the trade. I, I, I don't know, man, but let me tell you something about Big Mitchie, all right? Because he's not no snitchy, and I need a T-shirt for that. Well, listen, Mitch, Mitch didn't even play, man. Talk about Hartenstein, man. Hartenstein played today. Oh, oh, I, I, that was a good segue. That was a good segue. Oh, I, I talk about Mitchie to talk about iHeart. So this is what's going on with okay. Mitchie, right? Mitchie goes down, you know, it gives iHeart his time to shine and show the Knicks why they picked him up, why they picked him up from L.A. You know, he had 14 rebounds. That was solid. I don't care about the points because when you have Evan Fournier coming from watching a bunch of Mbappe highlights on the bench, coming to <laughs> drop 17 points, and when you have Deuce McBride, 14 on the night, man. Come on now, man. How could you lose? How can you lose, man? Salute to the Knicks, man. We did our thing. I was very proud, man. Keon, the curator on the Discord. Keon, the curator. Let's go. You know, quality win. Alex called it. 21 points to come back um, on the sort of like just quality defense, sort of calling back to that 2019-20 season. Um, odd season. Like, really effective offensively at certain points, but the defense has been super questionable. So to see a resurgence, particularly with iHeart, um, after we paid him that money is uh, nice. So we're going to yeah. see what's going to happen when, the, you know, the squad's back to fully healthy. RJ's been really up and down, so I'm hoping he finds some consistency on the back end. He usually tends to, you know, find a rhythm somehow those last yeah. 30 games. Have, um, have you left the RJ ship like a lot of these turncoat fans in the chat? Are you are you still with us, man? Are you rocking with Broadway Barrett or not? Because <laughs> a lot of these fans, they they they're going they're going in on our number three pick, right? Bro, play, play the kids. Killed me. They say Cody play the kids. Me with the bum juice, bro. We're here for the rebuild. Play the kids. Now all these guys want to toss them out, toss them over the ship. Turncoats, I mean, man. <laughs> Listen, I mean, as a fellow Caribbean, like, I got to rock with RJ to the yeah. death. I mean, listen, it's really effort on the defensive end that's killing us this season. And it's the same thing uh, for Julius. Last year, that was a big deal. And I think, like, there's this weird psychology that happens when, like, someone gets that big contract. I trust RJ will figure it out because that's really an effort thing and I think a fitness thing. Um and, you know, like you hear the rumors, you hear talks about like how dudes tend to like change their regimen right as they're coming upon a contract. They're not really playing as much pickup. And I think like there's a touch that he sort of lost over like when he sort of picked up a different sort of uh, I think he like changed his stroke a little bit to speed it up. And like, I just feel like he's just a little he's in a weird funk this season. Um, I have not left a ship. I think he's going to figure it out. Um, you know, like this again, weird season. Like, there are times I want Tom gone, but then I see the culture. I see, like, resilience. Like, we lost that game, and, yeah, there were some really bad coaching decisions. Tom makes me want to pull my hair out, but then at the same time, I see a team that came back and competed. Sorry, I'm taking up matter of your time, but, like, weird season. 
Yeah. There's a culture here. I mean, for me, New York is very, you know, sort of grimy. We're grit and grind. Like, there's mm-hmm. some heart here. So as long as guys show up and at least play their asses off, like, Julius, not a perfect night, but still 24, 9, and 7. The 7 assists is good stuff. There's still probably yeah. plenty of turnovers. Bro, like, it's all about effort. And really, RJ, it's exactly. sort of been that defensive effort. So we'll okay. see. Weird season, you know, but appreciate, uh, like, a quality win tonight. Alex, you know, keep manifesting for us, bro. Thank y'all for, for <laughs> no doubt. Thank y'all for taking my call. To the Discord we go, Sir Atlantis. Go ahead and unmute your mic, Sir Atlantis. Real quick, I just wanted to say that, you know, I'm never leaving the RJ Barrett train. And mm. I think that all this hate towards him has to stop and is completely unnecessary. The man is 22 years old. And I don't care if you say you don't want to hear it. It's important to note because go look back at when Jimmy Butler was 22 years old or Kawhi was 22 years old or Paul George was 22 years old. And all these other players that we like to compare RJ to and say RJ will never be in this tier like there was some stars in this league at 22. You had players like Donovan Mitchell coming into the league at 22. You had Brunson when he was 22. He wasn't even he was on the bench. And Randall was 28 years old right now. You guys are telling me that our third pick in the draft which can give us 30 on any night when he's really efficient, can get to the rim anytime he wants, just has a problem finishing, will not be better than no handle Randall when no handle Randall when he's 28 mm. years old right now. You don't think that RJ Barrett would be better? You guys are you guys don't know what you want. You guys say that we want player development, we want to play the kids, but when it's time to play the Let kids, know. the kids suck. Let's trade them out of here after the Let them know. Year. How could we ever build a team like that? Sir Atlanta spitting. Sir it will, it, it will never work. We always like to look at the Warriors or this player system or that player system. And we're always constantly trying to trade our players. And who's going to want to come to the Knicks? Who's going to want to come to the Knicks? Look that's how a, the same way that they're just doing Cam is the same way that you guys want to do R.J. Barrett. Our third pick. Mm. I'm hearing R.J. Barrett being traded, should be traded for O.J. and Anobi and two first. I almost yeah. threw up. You guys have to stop. Air, air it's them ridiculous. Out, man. I, and I can't stand to hear it anymore. And that's all I'm going to say in the situation. For the news you guys hate on RJ, you guys should be sick to yourself. And if you truly believe that, then we really don't deserve a first-round pick again. Mm. And I just wanted to say that um, uh, on Thibs, on Thibs, uh, either Thibs has to be fired because now we have Cam being benched. Obviously, Cam being benched and whatnot, and Obi Tomp is not playing. So either Thibs be fired or... Leon Rose be fired and Thibs become the GM and the head coach at the same time because it seems like he's calling all the shots. That's all I want to say. I'm with the RJ train so I die. He's 22. Players don't hit their prime until 27. Randall's 28. If you don't think RJ will be better than Randall, then I don't know. You just don't watch basketball. Mm. I'm out. Stop the hate. Goodbye. Appreciate the call, man. Sir <laughs> Atlantis. Rate that call in the chat, man. One being trash, five being facts. Is it tomatoes or fire emojis for Sir Atlantis? You know, I, I like I told you, Al. I'm just the moderator of this thing, but I'm gonna the be par- I'm, I'm gonna conductor. be partial. I'm just a conductor, okay? But I'm gonna be partial and give that man a five. I thought that was the call of the night. We're talking about play the kids. We're talking about player development. And when one of our own is struggling right now, we're ready to throw him over the bo- overboard, over the ship. Where's the patience? Where is the patience? Now, will he be better than Julius? I'm not so sure. I think Julius is a very talented player. I've always said that. You know, when people talk about, oh, you want to trade Julius, you want to trade It's never about that. He's, his talent. It's never about talent with Julius. It's never about talent. But will RJ be better than him? I'm not so sure. But the point is, just be patient with the kid, man. I mean, let him play through his lumps. This team's not going anywhere regardless. Just let him play through his lumps.